grade sevens, Helen here, and it's time for your next natural sciences lesson. At the moment, we're focusing on the topic of insulation, but today we're going to look at practically applying what we've learned about insulation to your homes. So we're going to be talking about how we insulate our homes. Let's remind ourselves of the theory. What do we mean by insulation? Well, insulation works at preventing or reducing the transfer of energy from a hot object to a cold object. Insulation comes in between this heat transfer and it's going to reduce the rate at which energy is transferred. So it slows down or hopefully stops altogether the rate or the process of heat energy transfer. Now we can talk about our homes as being in winter time the nice hot object and outside we've got the cold environment. And in winter time what we need to do is we need to keep the heat inside our homes and we want to prevent that heat from being transferred to the outside. Remember the cold is not going to be transferred inwards. That's, that doesn't happen. But what does happen is this lovely heat that we've generated is going to be transferred to the colder environment. So in winter we want to wrap up our house and protect our house from heat loss. However, in summertime we've got the reverse situation. In summer we've got a very hot environment and we've got a cooler house. Now what we need to do is prevent the heat from moving from the outside into our lovely cool home. So we've got to think about ways of insulating our homes. We want to keep them warm in winter, but we want to keep the warmth outside in summer and keep our homes cool in summer. And insulation is the way in which we are going to do this. So let's look at this little house of ours. We are going to see, and we can measure this, that energy, heat energy, is transferred from the roof. A large amount of heat energy happens through windows. There's even heat energy transfer through floors. Of course, doors are going to act similarly to windows, especially when we open the door in order to get in and out of the house. And even heat energy is going to radiate through walls. So we've got many different areas in our home that heat energy is going to be transferred to the outside. So what we need to do is block this transfer or at the very least we're going to try and slow down, reduce the rate of the energy transfer. Why should we need to do this? Why is it important to insulate our homes? Well, remember, we do want to keep our homes nice and warm in winter. We want it to be a place where we're not sitting and shivering. We want it to be warm. We want our homes to be comfortable. We want to be able to sleep well in a warm environment. So we use energy sources in order to generate heat energy inside our house. So we may have inside our house we may have a heater or we may have a fireplace. We're going to have these appliances or these measures to heat our home on the inside. But remember there are two problems here. Energy costs money. It costs money to use the electricity 
to keep our heater working and it costs money to purchase wood for our fire. And we also need to remember the bigger picture. Energy sources are limited. There is not an endless supply of coal to make electricity to keep our heater running. So we need to make sure that we don't waste money by heating our house with the fire and the heater and just allowing all that heat energy to escape to the environment. We need to find ways to insulate our home. Let's think about it. I think one of our most obvious things is to shut the doors, all right? Make sure that if somebody comes into your home, once they're in, the door is closed. Don't leave the door open because we're going to see an immediate transfer of heat energy out of the door. But sometimes, even when the door is closed, there's a little gap underneath the door. So we're going to roll up something and we're going to put it down at the door to stop that heat energy from escaping sneakily under the door. Let's talk about our windows. What we could do to our windows is hang curtains on the inside. If we hang curtains, that is fabric. And if we hang two layers of curtains, we're going to trap some air between those two layers of curtains and we're going to prevent this heat energy transfer. When we are building homes, we need to pay attention to the structure of the wall. If we have our walls as one brick layer thick, well, the heat energy will be able to move through that. But if we can put a layer on the inside, maybe of cladding or another brick layer, and we can trap a layer of air or insulating foam between the bricks, we will insulate the walls. What about our floors? Simply putting carpets down on the floor and mats is going to insulate the floor far better than if it was just concrete. Underneath the tiles of our roof, we might want to put some insulating um, material down. There's those pink materials or yellow materials that are going to insulate the roof so that we don't have heat loss through the tiles. So there are lots of ways that we can think about curtains, draft stoppers under the door. We can think about uh, carpets and mats, all ways to insulate the house and prevent excessive energy transfer to the outside. Now let's talk about insulation in some examples of different traditional or indigenous homes. These houses, these photographs are taken from Greece and some of the Greek islands. And if you have a look, the houses are tend to be mainly painted white. What can you deduce, that means what conclusions can you come to about the climate where these houses are built? In other words, the climate in the Mediterranean areas. Well, if they're painting their houses white, remember that you have already learned that different materials reflect radiation, while darker materials are going to absorb more radiation. We did an experiment to prove this a number of lessons ago. White is one of the colors that reflects the radiation. So these houses are painted white so that during summer they reflect radiation so that the house can stay cool in a very, very hot climate. Let's come closer to home and look at some traditional houses that we would find in Africa. We see that materials are used here from nature and that the materials themselves are very, very cleverly chosen to act as insulators, both 
to keep the homes warm inside in winter and then in our very hot African summers to keep the heat out and or to stop the heat from transferring into the homes to warm up the nice cool interior. So looking at all of these homes, where are the windows? There's a tiny little window. By not building windows into the walls of the house, we are going to stop all heat energy transfer that occurs through windows. Look at the material that makes up the outer covering of the roof of the house. In most cases, it's what we call thatch, and thatch is made from grasses. And grasses are very good insulators because the stalk of the grass becomes hollow as the grass dies, and that traps a layer of air. And if we start packing the thatch grass on top of each other, we're going to be trapping air and layers of air into the roof, and that is going to act as an insulation. This is called a Nama Maikis house, and it has reeds that make up the walls and the roof. And the reeds are going to act in exactly the same way as our thatch grasses do. Let's look at these two homes where we see that the walls of the house are not made out of reeds or thatch grass. What we see here is that our walls are made out of mud and clay. And we can also then assume that the mud and the clay and the substances that are going to be making the sides of the houses are also going to be very good insulators. We're only going to have one doorway, the one way in, and we're going to have a way to be able to seal that doorway in order to allow us to keep the inside hot or the inside cold, depending on where our home is built. Have a look at these two, the bottom two again. We can see that the thatch overlaps or has an, an overhang and we can see that this creates some shade right next to, we can see it in the picture there, shade next to the house. And so we've got a number of different strategies used using natural materials in order to insulate our homes. Now let's solve an insulation problem. A man is building a wooden house in a very cold climate. He has space for one window. Now he has an option. Should he put in one large window with a single pane of glass? Or should he put in a smaller window and use that single pane of glass by doubling up? All right, so he he takes his big pane of glass, he can cut it in half, and he's going to use a double layer of glass. We call this double glazing. So we're going to take two layers of glass, and we're going to separate our glass with an airspace. Which do you think is going to keep this man's house warmer in a very cold environment? Well, hopefully, from what you've learned about how animals insulate themselves, how cooler boxes are insulated, and certainly from how thatch roofs keep homes cool inside, we can say that if we choose the double glazing, we are going to have this layer of air trapped between the two panes of glass, and that is going to insulate our window. We're also reducing the surface area of the window. So there's less opportunity for heat transfer to take place through the glass. But even if we have some heat transfer taking place, we've 
reduced the size of the window and we've introduced a layer of insulating air. I hope you would also ask the man to please put curtains up so that that would also help him keep the inside of his house insulated. That's it for today. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.